Okay, people, I am back with you once again. Ali Rush here. I have some very, very important questions that you may be interested in. It would definitely do you great service to, to not only be interested in them, but to follow this advice. There's questions that a lot of people would, would ask or are asking right now. And these are questions desperately needing answers about coronavirus and COVID-19. I repeat that again for you in case you didn't get it the first time. Questions desperately needing answers about coronavirus and COVID-19. Question number one. Is the public water supply contaminated with COVID-19? The answer to that question is, there is no evidence that the virus has spread through the water supply. In fact, the treatment in water facilities protects us from pathogens. Question number two. Should patients cancel any standing appointments with their health care provider in order to avoid hospitals and medical offices where patients infected with COVID-19 may be present? The answer to that question is, it's very important to monitor your health as you normally would and follow up with your physician as scheduled. Many providers are now offering video visits to help sustain social distancing and keep patients and caregivers safe. You should call your provider to find out if your appointment can be provided through a video visit. Not all conditions can be seen via video, but your provider can decide the best type of appointment for you. Uh, moving on to question number three, if I feel sick, and I am worried I may have contracted COVID-19, should I visit an emergency room or Instacare immediately? Your answer to that question is, if you're experiencing symptoms of COVID-19, find out if you should be tested by calling the COVID-19 hotline at 844-844. 442-5224. That number again is 844-442-5224. Calling ahead allows a medical professional to assist your symptoms over the phone and determine if you should be tested for COVID-19. You will likely be referred to testing if you have one of the COVID-19 symptoms, which is subject to testing capacity. Symptoms of COVID-19 can include fever, cough, difficulty breathing, muscle aches and chills, decreased sense of smell or taste, and sore throat. Severe, severe symptoms if you, your child, or someone you are with is experiencing difficulty breathing and extreme shortness of breath, new confusion or inability to weaken, arouse bluish lips or face or any other symptoms of a medical emergency, call 911. Question number four, if I don't have symptoms of COVID-19, do I still need to wear a mask? The answer to that, Dr. Edward Steinhelm, an infectious disease expert at Intermountain Healthcare, recommends wearing a mask when you must be in a public place where social distancing is difficult, like a grocery store. But he cautions, don't assume a mask automatically means you're safe. 
And I also put this in one of my uh, previous videos. The homemade cloth ma masks are a benefit to the community, not the person wearing it, he said. That's because those who don't have any symptoms might still have the virus. And these masks, when made and worn correctly, help prevent transmission. Question number five. Can I contract COVID-19 from pets or animals? While the World Health Organization acknowledges there are instances of animals and pets, <coughs> excuse me, of COVID-19 patients becoming infected with the disease. Further evidence is needed to understand if animals and pets can spread the disease. <coughs> Excuse me again. While animals can spread virus between one another, they are generally distinct from humans, making it extremely hard for viruses to pass between pets and their owners. However, it is always a good idea to wash your hands with soap and water after contact with pets. Number six. <clears throat> Will drinking and gargling warm water every 15 minutes kill or flesh out COVID-19 virus from my system? The answer, no, while staying hydrated is very important. These practices do not prevent COVID-19. The best infection prevention methods for COVID-19 include wearing appropriate personal protective equipment at work, practicing social distancing, washing your hands, and having good hygiene. Number seven. I've heard that we can expect the spread of COVID-19 to slow as the weather warms similar to what we see with the flu. However, it seems the virus is spreading now in areas like Singapore, where it is currently very warm. How long will this virus live at temperatures above 100 degrees Fahrenheit? And your answer, generally, coronaviruses, coronaviruses survive for shorter periods at higher temperatures and higher humidity than in cooler or drier environments. However, it is not yet known whether weather and temperature affect the spread of COVID-19. Some other viruses, like those that cause the common cold and flu, spread more during cold weather months, but that doesn't mean it is impossible to become sick with these viruses during other months. There's much more to learn about the transmittability, severity, and other features associated with COVID-19, and investigations are ongoing. Question number eight. I've heard that COVID-19 can last on surfaces from 48 hours to 17 days. How long can it actually survive on surfaces? Your answer, it's not certain how long the virus that causes COVID-19 survives on surfaces, but according to the World Health Organization, the virus seems to behave like other coronaviruses. Studies suggest that coronaviruses in general may persist on surfaces for a few hours or up to several days. It also varies under different conditions. and the type of service, temperature, or humidity of the environment. Cleaning visibly dirty surfaces with simple disinfectants is a best practice measure to protect yourself and others from COVID-19 and other viral respiratory illnesses. After cleaning, wash your hands with soap and water or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer or wash them with soap and water. Avoid touching your eyes, mouth, or nose. Coming up to question number nine. I thought COVID-19 was mainly respiratory issues, but now I'm hearing that there are GI gastrointestinal symptoms too. Is that true? Does this justify buying lots of toilet paper? 
Answer is COVID-19 has a wide range of symptoms. Common symptoms include cough, fever, tiredness, and difficulty breathing in severe cases. Less common symptoms have included headache, sore throat, and rhinorrhea, anosmia, loss of smell, and gastrointestinal symptoms. While experts in consumer behavior say a surge in panic buying is not a surprise during a global pandemic, it's not necessary to buy large amounts of products like toilet paper to combat COVID-19 symptoms. <clears throat> Number 10. Ventilators are being used to treat COVID-19 patients. Is it true that ventilators are life-saving in the short term, but can cause associated pneumonia or lung damage and more permanent harm in the long term? Answer, it is well known throughout the healthcare community that ventilator-associated lung injury is a, is a risk, particularly with patients who are inhabited or in, incubated with ARDS, which stands for Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome. That said, here are a few important things to remember. In general terms, patients intubated in these settings will almost certainly die without the ventilator. We have learned a great deal in recent years about how to reduce the risk of ventilator-associated lung injury. Employing those lessons has significantly reduced the risk. Ventilator-associated pneumonia does occur, but the risk is very low with all the steps we currently employ. So while it's accurate to say there are risks when patients are intubated, particularly for long periods like COVID-19 patients, the benefit far exceeds the risk in patients, particularly those who don't have pre-existing lung conditions. Question number 11. What is the risk of disease transmission from clothing exposed during work? Answer is, while there have been no documented cases of transmission of COVID-19 via clothing and shoes at this point, following proper personal protective equipment guidelines at work and cleaning and disinfecting clothes properly is essential for preventing disease transmission. <clears throat> Question number 12, also the final question, answer will be coming up. Most of the stay home guidelines and directives seem to recommend not making travel plans through the end of April. What about making travel plans for May and June? How do we know when it is safe for anyone, especially at risk groups, to resume travel plans? Answer, right now there isn't a date set as to when travel plans can be resumed with 100% certainty. Only time will tell. Local and national leadership continue to be closely tied with infection prevention doctors and teams on guidance. But now, following Governor Herbert's Stay Safe, Stay Home directive and staying home whenever possible to help flatten the curb is important. Inter Mountains own Dr. Eddie Steinham also encourages people to stay home and to not make the travel plans for the next few months in a he made this statement in a recent uh, Facebook live. Well, I do hope that was helpful. And if you had questions similar to these, I hope the answer was satisfactory to you. Thanks for listening. Subscribe if you will. Like if you will. And thank you 